Video games are full of unforgettable story moments. From the shocking airport slaughter mission in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, to the fatherly redemption of Kratos in God of War. I am your father, and you, boy, are not yourself. You are too quick to temper. You are rash, insubordinate, and out of control. This will not stand. You will honor your mother and abandon this path you have chosen. It is not too late. This discussion is far from over. Video games bring stories to life like no other medium can. But what makes a great game story? And how are they written? I'm Camille Salzar Hadaway, and we'll try to answer those questions and more as we take a deep dive into the art of video game storytelling. So, what next? Well, next I guess we're gonna get shot. What makes a good story? Is it the characters, the action, the locale, or is it a bit of all of these elements? Well, it depends on what you're after. If you're after some minimal story with extreme action and gore, then Doom's got you covered. But if you want a deep character piece with an expansive open world, then maybe try Red Dead Redemption 2 or Horizon Zero Dawn. Or how about an Indiana Jones-inspired blockbuster ride? Then any of the Uncharted games will do the trick. But what if you want to chill? Then, check out 80 Days by Ankle. It is one of the best written games of the last decade, with over 750,000 words in it. That's over 12 novels worth of content. You'll always find something new. Then there's games like Coffee Talk. This pandemic sleeper hit sets the stakes super low and puts you in the shoes of a Seattle-based barista serving coffee to elves, humans, orcs, and succubi. But what about heavyweight AAA role-playing games like Dragon Age Inquisition or Mass Effect? The writers at BioWare are masterful storytellers who create narratives that twist and turn to reflect your own choices throughout their games. But just how are video games written? Well, that depends on the size of the game and varies from studio to studio. In television or film, writers will sit in a writer's room and bang out a script for whatever project they're working on, be it a season of shows or a Hollywood blockbuster. Usually, they'll work with the director or producer to finesse the script until they feel they're onto a good draft. After that, the writer moves on to other projects unless they're called back for a rewrite. In games, this happens too, but often devs or game designers will start with a really cool idea. This could be a simple concept in gameplay mechanics or other interactive elements that they want to build a game around. Some of these devs are super talented and wear many hats and will go on to write most of the story by themselves. Others, however, will bring in a writer to knock out their idea into shape. Other times, especially in story-driven games or in the AAA blockbuster space, writers will work with game designers and others to get the story and script down first. This usually happens in pre-production. The job of a writer generally falls into two roles. These are the game writer and the narrative designer. Some studios believe these to be two separate roles, whereas others combine them. Speaking at the 2018 Game Developer Conference, game writer and narrative designer Eric Sturpey and Molly Maloney, who both worked for Telltale Games at the time, defined how the roles worked at Telltale. Is writing is responsible for the characters and design is responsible for the player. Uh, and that's a really simplified way to view it, but it actually has been very useful for us because it provides a lens through which each of those disciplines can really focus their energy. Yeah. And so on the writing side of things, that looks like you got your dialogue, which is what your characters are saying. You have your character arcs, which is how the characters are growing and changing over the course of the story. And then you have your themes and tone, which this is the most subjective of these, but it basically means that if you're making a comedy, make it funny. If you're making a drama, make sure you're really tugging the heartstrings. Uh, for the design side, um, what this looks like at Telltale is choices and consequences are a big part. Um, and that is, uh, is the player making enough choices? Do they feel good in the moment? Are they paying off down the line? Um, next, we've got branching. Uh, is the player experiencing unique content and do they know it? People in these roles can also find themselves helping with the game's marketing, coming back to help with further content, rewrites, or to help fix any issues discovered during development before or after the game's release. 
In fact, in mid-production, the game might change in direction, requiring vast alterations to all elements including the narrative, game design, world, and more. AAA games with magnificent stories like 2018's God of War are wonderfully told. This game is the total package, with a well-acted script that seamlessly blends gameplay and story. And while much of what makes the story experience great comes from the execution of the script, it's the smaller, more quieter moments that really augment the characters and help build Kratos' new world. The game's storytelling from a mirror, for example, is designed to help you pass the time while traveling the environment, but also enriches the new land in which Kratos now finds himself and deepens the lore within it. And Mimir's stories are supremely effective at doing this. They are, at the same time, both intriguing and concise, revealing and vague, cannily scripted and brilliantly acted. We would do well to sit here in silence for the next few moments and reflect on Odin's capacity for cruelty. And so... Reflect longer. When it comes to developing game narrative, many will opt to make a narrative design document or story doc. This is often part of or separate to the game design document. Narrative docs generally include a story synopsis, character bios, world lore, and more. They are what writers, game designers, artists, and devs will refer to when creating the game's environments, characters, weapons, and other assets. Depending on the size of the project, these documents can range from a handful of pages to hundreds. So what are the tools that game writers and narrative designers use? Some will use a branching narrative tool like Twine, while others will use RTC or a combination of the Google Docs app to write and visualize their narrative. But for larger games with big data sets, some will write their games in spreadsheets, especially in RPGs. So how does one become a game writer or a narrative designer? Well, breaking into the games industry for any role is extremely tough. And this is also the case for these two roles, unfortunately. Even if you're a wizard with words or a master storyteller, if you've got little to no experience, then you'll find it tough. Most studios want writers who have worked as a writer on one or two games, plus writing experience in another medium such as film or comic books. That's a high bar to entry, and sadly, the games industry doesn't have the best reputation when it comes to welcoming fresh talent. This applies to people both transitioning into games and those just starting out. But with hard work and a bit of luck, it can be done. For starters, you'll want to get a good portfolio of work together. This could be short stories, excerpts from novels or scripts you're working on, sample dialogues for NPCs to say, these are called barks, and character biographies or world lore. But a really cool place to start and build a portfolio of gaming-related projects relatively quickly are game jams, especially ones carried out remotely. In these, you'll team up with like-minded people of varying experiences to craft a game in a set amount of time. So maybe you're selected for an interview. Next up would be a series of interviews and usually a written test to examine your pros. It's very hard to break in, but more work generally follows not long after you get your first gig or job. And once you're in, the only way is up. And who knows? Maybe one day you'll be crafting an epic narrative for a game that inspires young minds to do the same. And that's it. What's your favorite game story? Do you want to be a game writer? Let us know with a comment below. We hope you liked this video, and if you did, smash that like button and be sure to subscribe to the leaderboard for more videos like this one.